gentlemen, it is Wednesday, May 19th, 2021. Uh, I'm here today with Mike Connor. He's the CEO of Vizla Silver, VZLA on the venture, and I believe VIZSF on the QX. Uh, Vizla put out some great drill holes this morning, but I, I want to talk about those with Mike, but I also want to touch on last week's release. It was only a week ago when he put out even more great holes. Uh, and these are from two veins that are close to each other. One is last week's was the Napoleon uh, vein corridor, and today's was the Tahitos vein corridor. But, you know, in both cases, they're great holes. Uh, you got eight drill rigs going. You want to just bring us up to date on Napoleon and then and then maybe uh, Tahitos, and then we'll, we'll kind of, you know, what's the big picture? How does all this stuff come together in terms of, in terms of the company's plans and strategy going forward? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Eric. And I'm glad to um, have this opportunity to chat with you. And apologies, we weren't able to uh, connect after uh, we announced the Napoleon uh, release last week, but it was because we were on the project. And, and uh, I'll tell you, we, we continue to be uh, more and more just surprised and, and blown away by what we see there when we go down to the project. And so Napoleon has, has really started to, to um, surprise us to the upside and continue to grow. And as we're looking here on the, um, uh, the the plan map that we have in front of us, I'll just I'll point out two of the areas that we'll talk about here. So Napoleon is the the main vein here, which now goes for just about three kilometers uh, in strike. And mm -hmm. and the area that we're drilling right now is 800 meters of that, um, stepping out outside of that 800 meter area to the north on exploration holes and to the south on exploration holes. But we are resource drilling um, on that main section. And then today we put out news on Tejitos, which is here. Um, that's to the east of, of Napoleon. R right now, it's about 600 meters in strike. We suspect that it'll increase in strike and depth. Uh, both of these veins are open in all directions as well as depth. Um, and why the Napoleon info was so, uh, the Napoleon release was so important last week was because originally when we made our, our initial discovery um, last summer, that was hole two here. And hole seven here, um, those those were spectacular grades. Nine meters at 900 silver equivalent, and hole seven 5.3 at, at just under 3600 uh, gram silver equivalent. So spectacular grades. Now, as we step out uh, from those discovery holes, uh, we've been surprised to find out that this appears to be one large mineralized panel over this 800 meter strike. Um, so the most recent news that we put out was, was this section here, this four, four hole fence to the south, extending the mineralization, uh, I believe it was another 200 meters to the south, also drilling our, our deepest hole uh, so far over 300 meters in depth, uh, and great grades here, so um, hole 99, six, six meters and 600 gram silver equivalent, and underneath that hole 102, uh, just under four meters of 300 silver equivalent. Worth pointing out as well, uh, that the deepest hole in the, the, the kind of the center of the Napoleon area here was hole 54, just under two and a half meters at 1.9 kilogram silver equivalent. So great grades. Uh, and these, are, these aren't base metal grades. These are precious metal grades at depth, which is unique to this area yeah. uh, in the sense that typically you'd see your zonation into base metals at depth. At, at 300 plus meters at deep, we're getting some of the highest grade gold we've seen across the whole property. Uh, so yeah, I, I think that bears repeating. I think it's quite it's quite important because this is this is in fact quite unusual. Um, even if you look at other project like great projects like you know like Les Chispas, I mean I followed uh, I followed Silvercrest since it, since they originally listed, still do. You know they pulled tons of incredible holes. But when you look at most of their sections, there's a pretty or at least as far as I know right now, there's a fairly strict vertical zonation on that system. And that's normally how it is. And, you know, these low solidation epithermal systems, you don't generally expect to see more than maybe a couple hundred meters of, of real bonanza grades before it starts shifting, you know, into base metals and it becomes base metal dominant quite fast. So I, I think it's really interesting and, and a really good sign that your system seems to be telescoped. Like it's, for yeah. whatever reason, you seem to have quite a bit more vertical extent of the high grade precious metals than you'd normally expect. And that's got obviously good implications in terms of your obvious tonnage potential. One other thing that 
I want to know too, and you and I just talked about a minute ago, is this fan of high grade holes that's on the south, on the left, uh, when you're looking at the screen here, those are fairly big. Those were a 200 meter step out. You have done, at least on, when this map was produced, there were you know, a handful of holes you can see just west of the main body. <clears throat> There's presumably a few more in there by now. Uh, as far as you can tell, I know you don't have assays yet, but just basically looking at it in like vein or no vein, you think this basically connects up? Yeah, we're, we're under the uh, impression that that's the case that, um, you know, you can see that we are grid drilling this on 50 meter centers. So yeah. we're doing that because we believe that this will connect and, and create a resource here for us that, that's, um, you know, seemingly one large panel of mineralization. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're very impressed by the Napoleon vein. Yeah, and again, you know, you'll see the note on the bottom there. Uh, this is something I really, this is something I really like about what, what Mike and Charles and the guys are doing at Visa is when they put out releases um, with only with, with only one or two exceptions that were completely different vein areas, they pretty much stick to gold and silver only, which which I like a lot. I mean, there's a lot of polymetallic silver systems in Mexico where you've got guys mining two or 300 grams silver where it's actually like 80 grams silver and everything else with kitchen sink. Um, Visa puts out gold and silver only. And the bottom line on this slide before we move on, I think is, is very important, is the 54 holes, average width of four meters, average grade of 441 grams. You know, four meters is, a, uh, that's a really good thickness. I mean, you can, you can mine very efficiently with mechanized modern mining, modern equipment with four meter widths without really having much dilution at all. Uh, very little probably in practice. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to do the math for you and Mike isn't allowed to do the math for you. But if, but if you take the bottom two lines, it's not actually that hard to do the math. Um, I, you know, personally, I'd say there's probably, I don't know, 30, 40 million ounces of silver equivalent here. In this 800 meter section. And that's literally, that's literally back of the napkin math. Um, and there's obviously a substantial zone forming at Tejitos, which we'll go on to in a minute. Well, I just, think, yeah. Sorry, just to touch on that, when you, when you, when you gave that, um, you know, back of the envelope estimate, it, it's important just to consider that, that, you know, we're talking only about an 800 meter strike by 300 meters depth by four meters. And the only kind of number that that's missing that we don't give you is a specific gravity. And I, you know, I won't do that, but yeah. um, you know, what, what I want to show though, is, is that, you know, that's, this is this, um, what we're talking about, that number that you, you came up with there is, you know, in this box here, 800 meters of strike. Of course, as I said, Napoleon continues for almost three kilometers here. So we haven't even really scratched the surface of, of, of what we're seeing, um, you know, at the Napoleon vein and, and drilling to the south and the north, it looks promising. So it's, um, you know, it's, it's really quite an exciting I said it, I guess I've said this before that, that Napoleon is a beast. And I, I think we're just really starting to um, realize the, you know, the, the potential that we see here at Napoleon, but um, you know, even just at what we're looking at here, it, it's, it's really quite uh, significant. And one, one other thing I will mention, you, you did mention Las Chispas. And of course, you know, we have four meters at 440 uh, silver equivalent. If you look at that on a GT basis, that compares to some of the highest grade resources in, in Mexico in terms of silver um, silver resources as well. So uh, although it's a wider vein at 440, I mean, that grade on a GT basis is, is really quite impressive as well, too. The other thing I think is actually potentially pretty exciting, and I don't, I don't know how long you think it might take you to get there with the drills, but you know, when, when Mike was showing you the, uh, the, the plan map for the area, I, I find it interesting how, and then this was mentioned in today's release about Tejitos, how, how the Tejitos vein and Napoleon vein and maybe a couple of others should come together about 600 meters south of where they're drilling now. Yeah. There's no guarantees and I don't, I don't think they can see much of anything at surface, which is maybe a good thing because it means nobody else has gone after it. But it's not uncommon for structural intercepts to open things up and give you even more room for fluid flow. So I'm I'm very very curious to see what you guys get. I mean, not you're not getting great stuff already, but I'm I'm curious to see whether you even move things up a notch in, in terms of thickness, at least when you get down to those intercepts, because the rock tends to get really busted up, and there's a ton of room for fluid flow, which is that's the name of the game when these systems form. Do, do you have any sense of how long it's? I don't know what it's like in terms of how steep that area is, that kind of stuff. 
is you got any sense of how long it takes you to get that far south on either of these things? Well, it's it's right off the road, so it, you know to get to the southern portion of of Napoleon and Tito's won't be um, won't be super difficult. But um, we just you know we have such a robust exploration pipeline and program that we we haven't actually gone and and fully mapped and, and sampled the entire southern portion of Napoleon yet. Um, right. But um, you know, it's something that we're working on right now. But of course, you know, with with four rigs on Napoleon and two on Tejitos and uh, two others across the district, um, you know, we're we're um, uh, we are working very very fast. But um, you know, it's it's uh, it's in the pipeline to go down and, and explore okay. that. I do. Why don't we move on? You can talk about the results you put out from Tejitos today. Sure. So Tejitos, we did something similar um, as well to similar as to what we did with Napoleon, where we, we gave the uh, amount of holes that we've drilled and gave the average true width and the average uh, grade from what we're seeing. And again, Tejitos is this area here to the east of uh, Napoleon. Um, we put 32 holes into this um, and, and we've um, announced an average width of three meters at ha over half a kilo, 505 silver uh, equivalent grams uh, per time. And so, um, Tejitos was actually quite interesting because we, when we when we drilled it initially, we we actually hit some old workings, uh, and you can see that here. Any of these, any of these um, labels that have the asterisks indicate that we we hit old workings, and we actually gave a zero value to the interse intersection with um, or the, the portion with uh, with the old workings in it. But even then, we've had some spectacular grades. You know, eight point nine three at nine ten silver equivalent, uh, just under three meters at uh, one point eight silver equivalent. That's with those void spaces. But as we stepped away from, from that area, you know, we, we hit areas, you know, obviously to the deeper and, and, and away from, from those uh, 100 year old workings on, in the area. And we were blown away by, by some of these other grades that we found like two and a half meters at 2.2 uh, .2 kilo silver equivalent. Now, the interesting part about Tito's is that this is, um, there aren't any base metals in it at all. It's just, just silver and gold. So it's a little bit different than, uh, than Napoleon and other veins we see in the area. But now we've, We've traced it for over 575 meters on strike here. Uh, those 32 holes are along that strike area, um, 250 meters in depth. And again, three meters wide uh, true width by 505 gram silver equivalent. So um, again, uh, giving, giving the, the investors the, 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 the inputs needed to uh, make some estimates there, we're, we're, we're quite impressed by what we see here at, uh, at Tejitos and, and totally open uh, north, south, and at depth. So Tejitos, although it's not the same three kilometer long vein as uh, as Napoleon, I suspect that it'll get uh, a lot longer in strike and it'll continue to grow. And again, you know, these grades are are fantastic at depth. There's there's no indication that the uh, the grades are are shutting down at depth at all either. Yeah, it's quite. I mean, you, you clearly have some kind of a. I wouldn't say I, would, I wouldn't say a hybrid. I guess I'd just say that. These geological models are just models after all, and no two projects are the same. You just happen to have really gotten lucky to find one where, where you've got good down dip, high grade shoots, again, which is just not something you expect that much with low sulfidation. Um, again, Mike can't do the math, but I did. I told subscribers in the alert I sent out this morning that what they drilled so far here, you're probably looking 15, 20 million silver equivalent ounces. And again, it's wide open. Um, do you want to comment at all on where the other two rigs are, or is that just you just want to sure. stick to this stuff? Yeah, yeah. So again, four here on Napoleon, two on Tejitos, one here at um, uh, the, the Cordon de Oro vein, and then one up here at Animus. And it's kind of interesting because Animus, you know, originally when we started, we were talking about drilling underneath some of those uh, those old workings and, and right. uh, those old, old ore shoots there. So we've gone back and and you know, we we didn't give up on that because it didn't work. It, we we actually moved the rig over to Napoleon around this time last year because it seemed like a great target. So um, we're happy to say that you know our original theory of, of going underneath those old workings at um, at Animus is is looks like it's starting to uh, pay off a little bit there, and, and it could be an interesting. Uh, opportunity as well. And when I talk to a lot of the, the different groups and the old timers in the area, they, they always say, you know, got to go deeper, got to go deeper, um, you know, for, for the old times mining, old timers mining in the district, they, 
they they never stopped at depth because it they ran out of ore. They stopped because it was you know it was more expensive to mine deeper, and there was other low hanging fruit along strike and uh, closer to surface. So, um, again, this you know one interesting stat is that you know this this district's been producing for over 450 years. It's it's been a major silver district for for many many years. Um, until we got there, there was only ever a hundred drills ever put into the, the entire district. Um, some of those by capstone very, you know, in the mid two thousands. And then, um, we don't have any real data on it, but around animus, um, some group had drilled about maybe 40 holes or something like that, um, in the, in the late nineties. And so, you know, the, the fact that we made a virgin discovery at Napoleon, Tejitos was a virgin drilling discovery, never been drilled before. Um, some of these other new areas that we're targeting across the district are, are all virgin, never been drilled before. This isn't, you know, the scale of this is quite incredible. And we're, we're really getting excited about uh, the next steps here with drilling. Yeah, maybe, and maybe a comment on that, because I mean, it obviously it gets lost in drill holes where people care about, and that's what you're reporting, but it probably should get lost in the mix here that you've got a pretty substantial crew there. They've been out there for months and they're still going in terms of mapping new areas and uh, generating targets, right? Yeah, and, and this is the this is kind of our guiding doc, document here on how to do it. Uh, it's our exploration matrix. So we take um, identified targets in the left-hand side of the, the matrix, and we move them to the right through first pass prospecting, uh, killing them or, or upgrading them, uh, detailed mapping, drilling, all the way to resource drilling. And as you can see, we only have two uh, two here, two, two uh, projects or targets or whatever you want to refer to them as uh, in the resource drilling category. We have others on Napoleon and Tejitos area here uh, on advanced drilling. But you can see we have a, an abundance of other targets. And for, for these targets to, to get moved on, you know, we need to see the pathway to, you know, somewhere between five and, and 30 million ounces as a, as a potential uh, ore shoot or, or, or target. So um, the team, it is really, uh, really impressive. Our, our on the ground team is, is really great. And um, they've, they've done a great job of kind of dividing into groups, drilling geologists, uh, prospecting geologists, and, um, and tackling this kind of behemoth task of, of uh, <laughs> you know, modern exploration in an old district that's never seen it before. And just as, as a general, before we, before we close off here, um, you know, great, great results. Um, the stock is trading, uh, you know, in response to them as it should, and and there's obviously a really long way to go in terms of more good results and this thing getting a lot bigger. But you know, when when you guys first picked up Panuco, and it was I, I know at first there was, you know, a number of people, myself included, to be honest, had a bit of sticker shock at first. Although you know, I got over it once I sat down and kind of did some numbers in my head. But when you guys when you guys did the two deals for for Panuco or Rio Panuco, what was the you know did you did you have a number in your head like we have to find this much for this number to make sense? Yeah, I think it was thirty million ounces. <laughs> I think you're good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're uh, I think we're okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's I, I imply from that that you're at least going to be having conversations with the with the vendors, although I, I know that there's no, I know this is something that comes up because I get asked about it a lot when you're gonna pull a trigger. Um, there isn't actually any time pressure. People should be clear on that. There's actually quite a ways to run on both yeah. of these option agreements, but there's probably <clears throat> strategic reasons to do it earlier, but it's not like you have to. I mean, you've got you actually have tons of time to do it, but yeah. like, the bigger this thing, the bigger this thing looks, the more sense it makes you just get it over with, I suppose. Well, there's a few different reasons to, to on either side to, you know, wait or not wait. And, and you know, we have a, an excellent board and, and, and team that, um, you know, we spend time strategizing and, and, and uh, discussing these things. And so, uh, you know, I'm confident we'll make the right decision. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm quite comfortable too. So I think that that covers it for today. Um, two sets of great holes from two different veins on the Panuco project. This thing is, you know, it's holding good grades. They keep finding new high grade shoots. Um, they're growing it quite rapidly and and maintaining a, a high grade average, which is you know that's that's the whole thing. That's what we wanted to see from day one with this. I mean, that was really my my investment thesis for this from day one, and they're you know they've been hitting it out of the park so far. 
So Visa Resources, VZ, LA on the Venture, VIZ, SF on the QX. Uh, great Silver Explorer. Uh, this, this one, this one's, this, this one's going to be a mine. It's already a mine for the vendors, but I'm pretty comfortable it's going to be a mine for Visa too. It's just a matter of getting the work done, which, they, which they're getting done fast with eight drill rigs. So, you know, congrats, Mike. Another great set of results. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate that.